First Helvetic Confession, the end and intent of the Scripture. The principal intent of all the Scripture canonical is to declare that God is benevolent and friendly minded to mankind, and that he hath declared that kindness in and through Jesus Christ, his only Son, the which kindness is received by faith, but this faith is effectuous through charity and expressed in an innocent life. 6. Of God. Of God we believe in this sort, that he is almighty, being one in substance and three in persons, which even as he hath created by his word, that is his Son, all things of nothing, so by his spirit and providence governs he, preserves and nourisheth he, most truly, righteously, and wisely all things. 7. Of man. Man, which is the perfectest image of God in earth, and also is the chief dignity and honour among all creatures visible, being made of soul and body, of the which twain the body is mortal, the soul immortal, when he was created of God holy, by falling in vice and sin through his own fall, drew with him in that same ruin and fall, and so subjected all mankind to the same calamity and wretchedness that he fell in. 8. Of original sin. And so this pestiferous infection, which men calleth original, hath infected and overspread the whole kind of man, so far that by no help, he being the son of wrath and vengeance and enemy of God, could be healed by any means but by the help of God only. For if there be any good that remaineth in man after the fall, that same being jointly made weaker and weaker by our vice, turns to the worse, because the strength and power of evil overcometh it, and neither suffereth it us to follow reason, nor yet to exercise the godliness of our mind. 9. Of free will. Wherefore we attribute so free will to man, as we which witting and willing to do good feel experience of evil. Also evil truly we may do of our own will, but to embrace and follow good, except we be illuminated, stirred up, and mounted by the grace of Christ, we may not, for God is he which worketh in us both to will and to perform, and to accomplish for his own good will's sake. And of God communeth our health and salvation, but of ourself cometh perdition. 10. Of the eternal mind of God to restore man. And howbeit that through his fault man was subject unto damnation, and also was run under the just indignation of God to take vengeance of him, yet God the Father never ceased to take a merciful cure over him, the which thing is manifestly not only of the first promises and the whole law, which, as it is holy and good, teaching us the will of God, righteousness and truth, so worketh it wrath and storeth up sin within us, and slacketh it not, and that not through any fault of itself, but through our vice, but also clearly appeareth it through Christ, which was ordained and given for that purpose. 11. Of Jesus Christ, and that is done by him. This Christ, the very Son of God, and very God, and very man also, was made our brother at the time appointed. He took upon him whole man, made of soul and body, having two natures unvermixed, and one divine person, to the intent that he should restore unto life us that were dead, and make us arise of God annexed with himself. And also, after that, he had taken upon him of the Immaculate Virgin, by operation of the Holy Ghost, flesh, which was holy because of the union of the Godhead, which is, and also was like to our flesh in all things except in sinfulness, and that, because it behoved the sacrifice for sin to be clean and immaculate, gave that same flesh to death for to expel all our sin by that means. And he also, to the intent that we should have one full and perfect hope and trust of our immortality, hath raised up again from death to life his own flesh, and hath set it and placed it in heaven at the right hand of his almighty Father. And there he sitteth, our victorious champion, our guider, our captain, and head, also our highest bishop indeed, sin, death, and hell being victoriously overcome by him, and defendeth our cause, and pleadeth it perpetually, until he shall reform and fashion us to that likeness to which we were created, and bring us to be partakers of eternal life. And we look for him, and believeth that he shall come at the end of all ages to be our true, righteous, just judge, and shall pronounce sentence against all flesh, which shall be raised up before to that judgment, and that he shall exalt the godly above the heavens. By the ungodly shall he condemn both body and soul to eternal destruction. And as he only is our mediator and intercessor, 
host and sacrifice, bishop, lord, and our king, also do we acknowledge and confess him only to be our atonement and ransom, satisfaction, expiation, or wisdom, our defence and our only deliverer, refusing utterly all other means of life and salvation, except thus by Christ only. 12. The End of the Preaching of the Gospel And therefore, in the whole doctrine of the evangelists, enunciated and shown to be the first, and chiefly to be inculcated and taught, that we are safe only by the mercy of God and merit of our Saviour Christ, and that men may perceive and understand the better how necessary is the mercy of God and Christ's merits for them, their sins should be clearly showed to them by the law and remission by Christ's death. 13. Of faith and of the power of it. And these so godly benefits, with the very sanctification of the Holy Spirit, do we obtain by faith the true gift of God, and not through any other power or strength of ourselves or merits, which faith is one certain and undoubted substance and apprehension of all things that we hope for to come of the kindness of God, and it cometh first out of the self-charity, it worketh noble fruits of all virtues. Yet notwithstanding we attribute no thing to the deeds, although they be godly, yet be they men's works and acts, but the health and salvation that is obtained we attribute to the grace of God only. And truly this worshipping alone is the very true worshipping of God, faith I mean most pregnant and plentiful of good works, without any confidence in the works. 14. Of the Congregation or Church Also we hold and believe that the Church, which is the congregation and election of all holy men, which also is the spouse of Christ, whom he shall present without spot unto his Father, washing it in his own blood, of such lively stones aforesaid laid upon this lively rock on this manner. The which church, howbeit it be evidently known only to the eyes of God, yet be certain external rites instituted by Christ, and be one public and lawful teaching, teaching of the word of God, not only is it spied and known, but it is also so constituted by them, that without the ceremonies there is no man reckoned to be of it, except it be by a singular privilege of God. 15. The Ministers of the Word of God and for this cause we grant the ministers of the church to be cooperators of God, as Paul calleth them, by whom God giveth and ministereth both knowledge of ourself and remission of sin, and converteth men to himself, raiseth them up and comforteth them, affrayeth them also, and judgeth them, but so that the virtue and efficacy thereof we ascribe also to the Lord and the ministration of the sacrament. For it is manifest that this efficacy and power is not bound nor knit to any creature, but is dispensed liberally and freely, whosoever and whensoever he shall please, for he that watereth is nothing, nor yet is he that planteth anything, but he that giveth the increasement, which is God. 16. The Power of the Church The authority to preach God's word and to feed the Lord's flock, the which properly is the power of the keys, prescribing and commanding all men, both high and low, all like, should be holy and inviolate, and should be committed only to them that are meet therefore, and chosen other by the election of God, or else by a sure and advised election of the church, or by their will to whom the church depute and appoint that office of choosing. 17. The choosing of ministers or officers. This ministration and office should be granted to no man but to him whom the ministers of the church, and they unto whom the charge is given by the churches, and found judged to be of knowledge in the law of God and of innocent life, the which, seeing it is the very election of God, it is well and justly approved by the voice of the church, and the imposition of hands of the heads of the priests. 18. The Head and Shepherd of the Church Christ, verily, himself is the very true head of his church and congregation, and the only pastor and head, and he also giveth presidents, heads, and teachers, to the intent that, in the external administration, they should use the power of the church well and lawfully. Wherefore, we know not them that are heads and pastors in name only, nor yet the Romish head. 19. The duty of ministers or officers. The chief and principal office of this ministration is to preach repentance and remission of sin through Jesus Christ, to pray continually for the people, to give diligence wholly to holy studies and to the word of God, and to resist and pursue the devil always with the word of God, as with the sword of the Spirit, and that with a deadly hatred, and by all means to chasten him away, to defend the holy citizens of Christ, 
and by all means compel and reprove the forty and vicious, and to exclude from the church them that steereth too far, and that by a godly consent and agreement of them which are chosen of the ministers and magistrates for correction, or to punish them by any other way convenient and profitable means, so long until they come to amendment, and so be safe, for this is the returning of the church again, for one such citizen of Christ, if he acknowledge and confess his errors with converted mind and life, for all this doctrine seeketh and willeth, that we require willing and healthful correction, exhilarate or comfort all godly by a new study of godliness. 20. Of the power or strength of sacraments. There is twain which are named in the Church of God sacraments, baptism and houseling. Footnote, houseling, from housel, Anglo-Saxon, the Holy Eucharist, the giving or receiving the sacrament. End footnote. These be tokens of secret things, that is, of godly and spiritual things, of which things they take the name, and are not of naked signs, but they are of signs and verities together. For in baptism the water is the sign, but the thing in verity is regeneration and adoption in the people of God. In the houseling and thanksgiving, the bread and the wine are signs, but the thing and verity is the communion of the body of our Lord, health and salvation found, and remission of sins, the which are received by faith, even as the signs and tokens are received by the bodily mouth. Wherefore we affirm the sacraments not only to be badges and tokens of Christian society, but also to be signs of the grace of God, by the which the ministers worketh with God, to the end that the promise bringeth the work to pass, but so, as is aforesaid of the ministration of the word, that all the same power be ascribed to the Lord. 21. Of Baptism We affirm baptism to be by the institution of the Lord, the laver of regeneration, the which regeneration the Lord exhibiteth to his chosen by a visible sign, by the ministration of the congregation, as is aforesaid, in the which holy laver we wash our infants for this cause, because it is wickedness to reject and cast out of the fellowship and company of the people of God them that are born of us, which are the people of God, except them that are expressly commanded to be rejected by the voice of God, and for this cause chiefly because we should not presume ungodly of their election. 22. Of the Sacrament of the Altar But the mystical supper is in the which the Lord offereth his body and his blood, that is, his own self, verily to his own, for this intent he might live more and more in them, and they in him. Not so that the body and blood of the Lord are communed naturally to the bread and wine, or closed in them as in one place, or put in them by any carnal or marvellous presence, but because the body and blood of our Lord are received verily of one faithful soul, because the bread and the wine by the institution of the Lord are tokens by which the very communion or participation of the Lord's body and blood are exhibited of the Lord himself, through the ministration of the church, not to be a meat corruptible of the belly, but to be a nourishment and meat of eternal life. And this holy meat do we use oft for this cause, that when, through the monition and remembrance of it, we behold with the eye of our faith the death and blood of him that was crucified, and remember our salvation and health, not without a taste of heavenly life and very true feeling of eternal life, when we do this, we are wonderfully refreshed through this spiritual living and eternal food, and that with an unspeakable sweetness we exult and rejoice with a mirth unexpressible in words for the salvation that is found, and we all and whole are effused with all our power and strength, utterly in doing of thanks for so wonderful a benefit of Christ towards us. Therefore it is greatly without our deservings that some alleges and saith of us that we attribute little to the holy sacraments, for they are holy things and honourable, because they are instituted and ordained by our high priest Christ, and received, exhibiting the things that they signify in their own manner, as is aforesaid, being witness to the things that is done indeed, representing so high and hard things, and bringeth by wonderful correspondence and likeness of similitude a light and a clearness to the ministers that they signify, so holy is our belief and estimation of the sacraments, but verily appropriating the virtue of quickening and sanctifying to him only which is life, to whom be all honour and praise for ever. Amen. 23. Of coming to church. We believe and think the holy conventions and gatherings should be holden on this manner and sort, so that first, chiefly, and before all things, the word of God be preached to the people openly, in an open and public place, and that daily and the secret and the obscure places of the scripture be opened and declared by meet and competent men, and that by the holy supper of thanks, called houseling, the faith of the godly, be oft exercised, 
that they should be continually in prayer for all men and for the necessities of all men. But the rest of ceremonies, which as they are unprofitable, so are they innumerable, as vessels, garments, wax, lights, altars, gold, silver, insomuch as they serve to subvert the true religion of God, and chiefly idols and images that stand open to be worshipped and give offence and slander, and all such profane and ungodly things, do we abandon, reject, and put away from the holy congregation and convention. 24. Of heretics and schismatics. We also abandon and reject from our holy conventions all them that departeth from the society and fellowship of the holy church, and bringeth in strange or ungodly sects and opinions. With the which evil the Anabaptists are chiefly infected this time, the which we judge should be constrained and punished by the magistrates and high powers, if they obstinately do resist and will not obey the monition of the church, and that for the intent that they should not infect or corrupt the flock of God through their wicked evil. 25. Of things indifferent. The things that are called, and are indeed also indifferent, howbeit a godly man may use them freely and in every place and at all times, yet notwithstanding he should use them with knowledge and of charity to the glory of God truly and the edification of the church and congregation. 26. Of magistrates or governors. And seeing every magistrate and high power is of God, his chief and principal office is, except he would rather use tyranny, to defend the true worshipping of God from all blasphemy, and to procure true religion, and as the prophet doth teach of the voice of God, to execute for his power. In which part a true and sincere preaching of the word of God remaineth with a right and diligent institution of the discipline of citizens and of the schools, just correction and nurture with liberality towards the ministers of the church, with a solicited and thoughtful charge of the poor, to the which end all the riches of the church is referred, this, I say, hath the first and chief place in the execution of the magistrate. Then, after to judge the people by equal and godly laws, to exercise and maintain judgment and justice, to defend the commonwealth and punish transgressors according to their fault, either in goods, their bodies, or their lives. And when the magistrate executeth these things, he honoureth God, as he should, in his vocation. And we, howbeit we be free both in our body and all our goods, and in the studies of our mind and thought also with a true faith, knoweth that we should be subject in holiness to the magistrate, and should keep fidelity and promise to him, so long as his commandments, statutes, and impairs evidently repugneth not with him for whose sake we honour and worship the magistrates. 27. Of holy matrimony. We judge marriage, which was institute of God, for all men apt and meet therefore, which are not called from it by any other vocation, to repugn to holiness of no order, the which marriage, as the church authorizeth it, and celebrates, and solemnizes it with orison and prayer. And therefore we reject and refuse this monkly chastity, and all hold this slothful and sluggish sort of life of superstitious men, as abominably invented and excogitate thing, and abandon it as a thing repugnant both to the commonwealth and to the church, and so confirmeth and establisheth it, so it belongeth to the magistrate to see that it be worthily both begun and worshipped, and not broken but for a just cause. A declaration or witnessing of our mind. It is not our mind for to prescribe by this brief chapters a certain rule of the faith to all churches and congregations, for we know no other rule of faith but the Holy Scripture, and therefore we are well contented with them that agreeeth with these things, albeit they use another manner of speaking or confession differently, and partly to this of ours in words, for rather should the matter be considered than the words, and therefore we make it free for all men to use their own sort of speaking as they shall perceive most profitable for their churches, and we shall use the same liberty. And if any man will attempt to corrupt the true meaning of this our confession, he shall hear both a confession and a defence of the verity and truth. It was our pleasure to use these words at this present time that we might declare our opinion in our religion and worshipping of God. If you enjoyed this recording, please support our channel by subscribing, liking and sharing our content. We would also be happy to receive any comments or feedback below.